Hi, I'm TK Miza, and you're listening to Main Talk Girl. Hey, welcome to Main Pod Girl, a podcast made by pop heads for pop heads. Every episode, we'll be diving into all kinds of pop culture topics with some of our favorite artists and music commentators. I'm your host, AJ Marks, and today's guest woke up and chose violence. Ugh. Born in Zimbabwe and hailing from Australia, she's a multifaceted singer, rapper, and true artist. Yeah. After releasing a trio of EPs over the past couple years, starting her fashion line and opening up for Billie Eilish and Liz. So she's back with her incredible second album, Sweet Justice. Ah! It's TK Maitza. How are you doing, TK? That was an insane intro. Like, you have to intro me at every show at this point. Can I be your hype man? Please. Yes. It's just like, yeah, it's like they open the veil and you're speaking. That sounds amazing. I'd love that. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Good. I, um, I've been listening to your album I love it. I love it so much. But the fresh insight. <laughs> yeah, my friends are really jealous. They know that I've heard it. Uh, and they're they're like, oh my God, I can't wait. Especially because you just had a song with Lolo Zawai and Amber Mark. Mm -hmm. And Amber Mark has been on this podcast before. She's my girl. She's so fire. I know. She's so fire. Both of them are. And so I just yeah. like love the little trio collab. That was so it, good. It's literally like when Beyonce got pink and Britney at the Super Bowl. Yes, exactly. It's like a Powerpuff Girls moment, you know? No, let's see. Which Powerpuff Girl would it be? Uh, I feel like I would be Buttercup. Buttercup? Mm, I can see that. But I also feel like I'm Blossom at the same time. Just not Bubbles. I'm not Bubbles. <laughs> Lola's Bubbles Respectfully. Yes, I totally see that. She's a strong bubbles. I think Amber is Blossom and I'm Buttercup. Nice. I love that. I could totally, <laughs> yeah. I could totally see that. We're going to have to have someone make some fan art of that. <laughs> My boyfriend's laughing in the background <laughs> like, okay, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Does so your boyfriend think that you're a Blossom or a Buttercup? Am I a Blossom or Buttercup, baby? He's like, I don't remember the show. We didn't like him. Boycott. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite song, personally, of yours is Kim Ooh. and its music video, especially. <laughs> Thank so you. I have, a, I have a little hypothetical scenario game for you called Call DM Block. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to list out three Kims, the three Kims that you played in the music video. And you have to call one, DM one, and block one. All right, let's go. Let's go. So call DM block, Kim Kardashian, Lil Kim, Kim Possible. Call um, Lil Kim. Call Lil Kim, what we talk about? I'm just going to be like, baby girl, you're so sick. Like, what? <laughs> like, baby, you ass so fat. Like, what the fuck? Like, your face <laughs> is so fire. <laughs> um, DM. Kardashian or Possible. Honestly, DM Kim Kardashian. Okay. Uh, but hey, girl. <laughs> hey, girl, please post me on your story. <laughs> please. And then, unfortunately, blog Kim Possible because she's not real. So she can't do anything. <laughs> I'm literally being an opportunist. She can't do anything for me. She can't do anything for you. No, it's actually really insane because... um. Wait, what's her name? I'm um, Christy Carlson Romano. <laughs> yeah, she followed me. She's like, I'm Kim. And I was like, let's go. Wait, and she, like, she told you she yeah, was Kim? <laughs> and, and she said her husband was watching me play at a show. Oh my God, that's awesome. Wait, so you actually, so Kim DM'd you. The real Kim Possible. Yeah. She likes the video, I'm assuming. Yeah. It's it's really weird. I wonder what it feels like to be just like a voice. Yeah, to be like the super famous cartoon character. <laughs> I remember I watched that show because Raven Raven Simone was on it. Mm. But I but well, she just wasn't possible. in it enough. Yeah, she was um the best friend. As, what the hell? All right, Disney has it on look. For yeah, sure. absolutely. I mean, Raven was doing everything. They keep it in the family for sure. Wait, hold on. Oh, she plays Monique. Wait, that was the black friend. Makes sense. That's very culturally appropriate imagine if raven was like kim's friend and she was white that would be sad <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's get in let's talk about this album cover can you walk me through your vision of this it's like the yassification of the sphinx cleopatra and statue of liberty all in one mm, 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 mm. <laughs> yeah so okay so i've been working with this artist named hugo rochelle he's mm -hmm. from france 
And the way I met him, it was during lockdown. So everyone was being really DIY. Mm -hmm. And I searched literally the hashtag BFX or like CGI. I don't know. It was BFX or CGI. And I found him and I was like, the amount of detail and focus and I don't know, boldness of his like imagery was like really inspiring to me. So I hit him up and I was like, yo, I'm an artist in 4AD. I'm releasing my second EP out of like three of them. Like, I feel like I'm on a motorbike and I'm in the desert. It's like you're out in nowhere and there's no one to help you. And it's very relevant because lockdown and also just like with everything that was happening i didn't really have the right people around me it was like very everything was really fresh like i was like i'm supported but it, it was sparse if anything and he did that cover and then the next cover was last year was red three and he's like cool what's the concept for this one and so i was in a desert and then in the next cover it was me on a mad max car like demon car but I'm in a garden. So it's like, I'm ready to go, but I'm surrounded by everything that I love. Like, I felt really supported in that era. And the funniest thing is I'm a Sagittarius, so on the cover I have a bow and arrow, and I'm shooting for something. So it's like I'm still going somewhere. So when this next album cover came together, a lot of people were like, we should get you in that cover, actually. And I'm like... One, like having a real person, having a real environment, too much money. And yeah. there's so much room for error. And I really trust Hugo. So I went back and asked him again. I was like, can you please like do the cover for me? Did you have like specific direction for this album cover? Or were you just like, do whatever? So the last three EPs, I'm on a vehicle. Mm -hmm. And for this album, I said... I'm sitting somewhere. I'm not going anywhere anymore. It's like I've arrived. So that's why the album is like, it's almost like, like you said, like Cleopatra. It looks like Egypt. Yeah. It's a temple and I'm sitting here and I finally know who I am to some extent. But yeah, people just trying to like come in. And that's why there's people on the floor. Like if you look beyond the, yeah. like below the temple, there's like a whole crowd trying to get in. So that was the vibe. I was like, it has to be a temple, me arriving somewhere. I really want to involve butterfly wings. So the things that are like behind my back, they're mm. butterfly wings, but they're very like futuristic. Yeah. Yeah. And you have the butterfly in your hand. Yeah. The environment is still nature because I would love everyone to understand that I'm so grounded. Mm -hmm. Like every um, environment all my covers are in is always grounded. Right. Being a kid that was born in an African family that was originally from Africa and go to Australia. And like the reason why we moved there is because my parents both worked in mining. Yeah. And my dad's a metallurgical scientist and my mom's an industrial chemist. So it's like, whatever you do has to be fire. Like it has to be insane. So the one thing I love about your music is like the balance between your rapping and your singing. Do you have sessions where you go in and you're like, I want to rap today or I want to sing today? Or like, do you just kind of show up and you hear the beat and you're like, all right, this is what I'm going for? Yeah. Um, generally, if it's like rapping, I like to work by myself. I don't really want anyone to be around me because I think for me, rap is so sacred, honestly. It's a stream of consciousness and you have to to like say what you really feel but in, in like the most sophisticated way and when you have people like Kendrick Lamar, Nicki Minaj, Lauren Hill, Missy Elliott like if you have those as, as your inspirations like there's a sense of I know what I'm aiming for and I'm gonna wait till I get to that point. Yeah it's like a responsibility if you're gonna do it you gotta do it right. Yeah responsibility and it's weird because I started rapping first. I then was singing because no one in my city would like help me write hooks or whatever it like everyone everyone was generally like unreliable so i was like all right whatever i'm gonna start saying my courses myself and right now it's what everyone is it's like drake there's your cat she doesn't need a feature she doesn't need anyone on any of her songs and her new album doesn't have anyone exactly and yeah. i think me at my 
ultimate. It's like, mm-hmm. I don't need anyone. I can literally be every voice that I need to be. Actually, I have another game for you. I have another game. Uh, let's go. This is called Who You Gonna Call. I'm going to put you in three hypothetical scenarios where you're given three options of people to help you out. All right. So scenario one, you're on one of those exhausting 21-hour flights from Adelaide to London. Mm. To see me, of course. But coincidentally, three people you've opened up for are also looking to fly from Adelaide to London around the same time. Who are you going to ask to spend 21 hours with you on a plane? Is it going to be Flume, Lizzo, or Billy? Uh, honestly, Flume. Flume? Yeah, he's so chill. He just invited me to a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> like like 10 minutes ago oh my god that's so sweet wait i think someone on this podcast said something about flume eating ass on stage was uh, is that flume? yeah that was that was viral <laughs> no, but he literally was like i can let you do anything now that that came out he was literally like i don't have to be innocent anymore and i was like i love that for you <laughs> well tell him i said hi at the barbecue <laughs> for the next scenario let's say you're shooting a new commercial for your fashion line last year was weird let's go. Let's and go. you need someone to model your clothes in the commercial you have three fellow rap girlies who have already agreed to do rap it Rap girlies. who are you gonna call is it rico nasty doja cat or missy elliott uh, no rico is number one rico yeah i feel oh you can dress her in like menswear and streetwear and like sexy shit and so the last one is you decide to do a triathlon with our girl amber mark oh my god but you need a third person on the team oh my god so this is a two-part hypothetical because first you have to pick which of your previous collaborators you want to join you and amber in the triathlon and then second you have to decide who's running who's swimming and who's cycling oh my god who are you gonna call is it choice of on jpeg mafia or baby tate do you know what? I feel like Troy Sivan would be really good at running. You feel... Okay. So, Troy's oh, running. Is. Who's swimming and who's cycling then? Troy's running. Um, I don't think any black girls, like, they don't be swimming. Like, black people don't swim. <laughs> Do you uh, want to make Troy <laughs> swim then? Yeah. Troy is swimming. Okay. Troy's swimming. I can see he's, swimming. You know, he's very, like, nimble. I feel like he'd just, like, glide through that Troy, water. No, Troy's swimming and running. <laughs> and then and you then, and Amber are going to cycle together at the end. Yeah, we're going to ride the bike together. I don't know. I don't Tandem know. bike. <laughs> Make it extra fast. If I think about anyone that, like, I know that is a musician that runs, like, no one's running. <laughs> <laughs> so even if you could call anyone in the world, you're like, nope, sorry, Troy's going to be running. I'm just like, no, Troy's for me. Troy swimming. Okay. His new music videos are insane. So good. I love the They're choreography. So I've watched it like four or five it times. It's so good. And it was like perfect timing after the idol. Like I was like, mm-hmm. bis- I was like, bis- what? Honestly, I mean, it's pop heads and everyone has uh, opinions. <laughs> <laughs> like the show was insane. Like it was a train wreck, but it was, it was like, I can't stop watching. Three years ago, you did an AMA on pop heads which mm-hmm. you've told me you are a frequenter of. Yeah. And I saw that you listed Kay Trinata as a dream collaborator. Now you have like multiple songs that you work together with him yeah. on, on the new album. It How was, was that? surreal. I think the most important thing for Kay Trinata was making him feel comfortable and making him feel like mm-hmm. that he's fine. Like he's great. He's amazing. But I think when you have some like a secret key, you have to protect it. So it's like, it's yeah. like, bro, you're good. Like I'm here and I'm just down to be friends in general. We don't have to like release a song. So that was kind of the approach that I had. And we had these sessions and the songs were sitting there and I was like, is this for you? Is this for me? Did like we asked us questions and eventually he's like, you can have these if you want. And I was like, that's amazing. It's been seven years since your last full-length studio album let's break that down a little bit what made it feel like the right time to switch like back into album mode after the eps i mean contractually i had to obligate to making an album (laughs) (laughs) okay fair enough (laughs) all right because you don't get much progress with eps right with those three eps that was meant to be my second album so I asked if I could do three EPs, which is actually more than one album. 
Oh, so it like qualified as an album in your contract? Yeah, so they allowed me to do that, which is really nice. Were you particularly nervous to switch back into album mode, though? Yeah, because I feel like albums are like the magnum opus of people. It's like it's so like career defining. So I have one more game for you, actually. Mm -hmm. It's called Firsts and Favorites. And I wish I could find a way to explain this one, but the title really kind of says it all. It's just, I'm going to ask you something about your first and something ask you something about your favorite. Mm-hmm. The first one is the first artist that inspired you to make music. Kanye West. And then who's your favorite artist at the moment? TK Maita. TK Maita. <laughs> <laughs> Are you listening to a lot of your own shit? Honestly, I've been listening to podcasts. Ooh, okay. Which podcast other than this one? It's called Narcissist Apocalypse. Wait, what's that about? That sounds fun. People come in and they tell their whole train wreck. They meet people and they tell, like, the whole experience and how they got out, basically. Oh, of, like, being with a narcissist? Yeah, it could be, like, a boyfriend or someone that you worked with. Oh, I, so I'm going to have to listen to that. That sounds interesting. Wait, text me your number and I can send you these podcasts. They're really funny. Okay. And I'll text you. Yeah, there's, there's like, a couple of them. I'm just like, what the hell? All right. First artist inspired you, Kanye. Favorite artist at the moment, TK. First album that you bought. Stankonia by Outcast. I can see a little bit of Outcast in you and, like, in the music. Yeah, and just, like, the way of living. So wait, what's your favorite album of all time? Honestly, I'm going to say whatever Sampha is doing because... Every time I put it on, I love it on. Sampha. I think Sampha is amazing. Nobody knows me like the piano. I still like. I'm obsessed with that song so much. Oh, okay, so moving on to songs, then. What's the first song to go triple platinum in your household? Um, "Don't Funk My Heart" by Black Eyed Peas. Yes. So, <laughs> see, I'm like the biggest Black Eyed Peas fan you'll maybe ever Did meet. You play Herbs Sims, but they had Black Eyed Peas. Did they have Don't Funk With My Heart on there? Yeah, it was all in Simlish. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you found it? Let me be like, yo. And then what's your favorite song in your own discography? 24K. 24K. Oh, fair. It's so funny because when I think of that song, it's like, it's very like Bloodsphere. It's a growler. When I listen to an album for the first time, I never trust what my first like initial favorites are because usually, because like years later, my favorites will be like all different. Like they'll actually like, it'll be the growers and there's other ones that are just like showers that are like my favorites initially, but then like the growers stick around and those are going to be the ones with you forever. Yeah. So I'm excited to see which one is the grower on me Sweet too. Justice. I really love Love Again. That's, I feel like that's a grower for me. Love Again. Ooh, interesting. See, that one was not one of the like initial showers that I had in my head. Um, which means it'll be one of the growers, probably. Maybe. Or the Cage Nod songs, which I'm like, why are they not singles? Wait, did you want them to be singles? I did. I can see them as singles, especially Ghost. Exactly. I can't wait for the world to hear Ghost. I'm trusting the label. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, DK, for joining me. Yeah. Thank you to Noah for the theme music. And then make sure to rate and review us on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on right now. And I'll see you next time.